excited. Um, I'm hanging out with John Sonne in the studio. Um, I mean, it's one of those stories where he grew up poor. Um, he made lots of money between the age of 23 and 28. By 30, lost all his millions. And now he's out here teaching us, you know, how to sort our lives out, man. John, welcome to East Coast Radio. Thank you so much. What a great uh, introduction. Poor. And kind of made it again. What a great way to start. Um, yeah, man. I, I mean, I was, going, I was going through your story, and I think it, it, it's, it's amazing. But it's also a story that a lot of people can relate to. Just a lot of us, obviously, yes. never actually ever make it back up again. Well, I, you know, the thing is, I was on Anele's show about a month ago. Yeah. And she said to me, in South Africa, a lot of the African people don't think white people were ever poor. So that, <laughs> including so you. Yeah. <laughs> and so Anela like, said, you ah, need to... Poor and my poor is not the same. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. kind of. Yeah. Uh, I, I actually agree. Yes, you're right. Yeah. I think there are different levels of poor. But I come from a single mom family and uh, yeah. she was a secretary earning 750 rand a month. Our rent was 350 rand. And that's when I was growing up. And that's what I kind of uh, got used to growing up, you know? Yeah, yeah. Mm. You've, got, you've got beautiful skin. What are you, Persian? You've got beautiful, beautiful skin. <laughs> Thank you so much. Fresh air, green juice, lots of hot water and lemon. And I think that's the secret. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got a brand new book out. Um, it's called Magnetize. That's right. Okay. Now, look, obviously, it, it talks a lot about anticipating change um, and really us being ready to embrace change, which we generally aren't. Like, why do you think humans generally um, resist change so much? Our brains are designed to keep us safe, not happy. And in safety, what happens to us is that if we don't understand something, we immediately don't trust it. And so for me, the combination of exposing yourself to the future is an upward spiral towards optimism. And so what's going on in the world, whether you are a Fortune 100 organization yeah. or you are a man on the street or a woman on the street, with the lack of exposure to the future, what you're doing is putting yourself in a disadvantageous space because what you're doing is you're creating a downward spiral of victim mindset. Yeah. So the combination of human psychology, responsibility for our focus, plus understanding, categorizing and contextualizing the future and the trends that are coming towards us, yeah. that combination makes you really dangerous. Yo, John, so yo, I hear you, right? But an average person generally does not think like that. If you take, for example, let's take East Coast Radio. So the company is run by these old guys yeah. at the top who by nature would resist change because they are used to obviously doing things the same way that they've done it over all these years. Yes. What would you say is, is, the, is the best approach for us to approach them with all the changes that need to be done. Because, Two things. Yeah. One, I call it the ironic rut of success. Okay. And what it does, previous success, makes us lazy and arrogant about shifting. And the only thing that gets those people to shift is deep pain. <laughs> so really, you know, old white yeah. men is yeah. what I see yeah. around yeah. the world yeah. that are stubborn as all hell. Yeah. And they are holding on to what they've known um, with all their might yeah. and not letting it go. The second thing to your question is what you should do to them yeah. is get out this business and disrupt them. That's what you should do. Stop fighting the structures that aren't allowing you to live a more diverse and flexible life. I worked with, uh, I work with all the banks and uh, one, of the, one of the banks, one of the guys stood up after my keynote and said, I'm so frustrated with management and I'm this and this and he was ranting. Yeah. And I said, you know what that sounds like? It sounds like you should get out and disrupt the bank. I mean, if you're so frustrated, you so, why move. Don't you go, why don't exactly, you go on? exactly. Uh, you've got a very interesting story where you started working at the age of thirteen. That's right. Um, yeah. T take me back. Right. Where did you work, yeah. and why did you decide to go and get a job at the age of thirteen? Well done, thank you. Good question. Um, I realized at eight years old that we were poor. I never okay. knew that we were poor. I, rem I remember the day I came home to ask my mom to buy me a yo-yo because I was so chuffed that the yo-yo thing, the craze, had arrived, yeah, and my mom, yeah. bless her soul, couldn't afford to buy us a yo-yo. And that just broke me and it actually made me hung, very angry. I'm, I'm sure it broke my mom. Yeah. But what I realized was I was financially, um, I, was a, I was a captive, you know, I didn't have the freedom. So at 13 years old, the first time I could actually get out there and start asking for a job, I became a person who packed bags at the spa in Edenvale oh. in Joburg. So I earned okay. three rand 20 an hour. 
And the key that I wanted to have was the discussions with my friends at school when they were speaking about the videos they watched over the weekend. We didn't have a video machine. And so what I was like, I want a video machine so I can get so in on this discussion. Wow. And so I saved up two months of salary and I went and bought a video machine only to realize that I needed more money for a video contract, <laughs> which yes. I didn't know. So then I had to save up another month to get a video contract. And then eventually I could get into the conversation of, yes, I watched this video, you know, Police Academy, I think was one of the videos that we watched Same. back then. Yeah, yeah. But then straight after that, something new arrived called Mnet. And then all of a sudden people had Mnet at school. So then I saved up again to buy an Mnet decoder. So all of this at 13? 13, 14, 14, yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah. And then, listen, I built up this absolute need not to be poor as a driving force yeah. behind my yeah, energy. Yeah. And by the time I was 26, I was a multimillionaire. You know, I had it all. You know, I had the fancy cars, the fancy houses, the fancy businesses, the fancy clothes. I'm still going to get to that because there's so many okay. things that I want Let's to go. ask about Let's that. Go. Okay, cool. Um, what I wanted to know with regards to you being 13, like what do you think you learned from starting work at 13 and obviously now you've got to pay for Mnet and then mm. now you, this video machine, mm. what do you think you learned at 13? Well, I was being driven by frustration mm. and it was this level of frustration that I didn't want to be in anymore. I felt shame. I felt embarrassed. I felt like I wasn't man enough yeah. because everybody else around me had these had trappings and I had, didn't. Yeah. Although this is the biggest mistake I ever made. I start my new book off with a saying that says, are you running away from the darkness or are you running towards the light? From the outside, it looks exactly the same. One of them is driven by anxiousness and the other one is driven by excitement. I was being driven by anxiousness. And when you are driven by anxiousness, be very sure that the dragon that's chasing you, whether it be poverty, whatever it is, yeah. will catch you. But, but, but how, do, how do you know the difference? Because sometimes I think, you get so caught up in your life, like it's very, it's very difficult to actually know the difference. It's v when you ask the question, yeah. which is the hardest thing, it's very obvious. Yeah. And the question is, am I excited or anxious? That's it. And it's actually straightforward. It's very straightforward. People don't want to ask the question because they don't know any other way to live. And also, I think that the answer to the question sometimes is scary. scary. Of course because it is. Because the truth hurts sometimes. Of course. When you realize that actually, and now I've got to do something about it. Most people aren't prepared. Nobody's prepared be because what society has taught us is this ridiculous notion that ambition is the constant chase. And that is rubbish. The most successful people in the world are not chasing, they're building. The most successful people in the world are not chasing, they're building. Because when you're chasing, you never arrive. When you're chasing, you're driven by anxiousness. Yes. When you're building, you're building this castle. You're excited about putting the foundation in. When you're chasing, you've got this dragon coming from somewhere that's going to eat you. Whether it's the mortgage, the school fees, uh, am I going to get fired today? When people haven't taken the responsibility for their lives and then give it over to a corporate organization or to a government or whatever, you feel weak. Yeah. You feel you're not in control. You're not in control. Um, and then... Phew. Yeah, that's actually quite powerful. <laughs> so, John, and then you spoke about stop chasing your life Take control of your future. Yeah. Please explain that. Yeah. So this, the new book, I mean, the payoff line is stop the chase, yeah. understand the change, take control of your future. Yeah. That's the idea here is that one, what we need to realize is that the future we're moving into is so vastly different to the yeah. past we come from that if we're not in our best state of being, we can't make the most creative, most excited decisions that we could possibly do. In other words, if you have a deer that's in the felt, eating, okay. relaxed, and calm, all of a sudden feels danger. What happens with that deer is that it is totally uh, full of liquid energy called adrenaline. Yeah. And this deer now starts focusing on three things, time, environment, and my body. And this deer is now running at all pace to get away from the lion, the cheetah that wants to eat Whatever's it. Gonna the minute it's gotten away from everything, it relaxes again, it shakes it up, and then carries on grazing and is calm. Our lives are the deer running away from this lion, this anxiousness. We are filled with fright or flight and adrenaline. Yeah. In this space, 
When we are worried about, do we have enough time? Because we're always running out of time. Are we safe? Is our environment safe? And I don't care about the team. It's about my safety first over the rest of everybody else. That selfishness is all based on this idea for us not taking responsibility for our self worth our being who we are to move away from anxiousness towards excitement so the book is about let's understand what drives us and if we haven't healed our past if we haven't healed our memories there's a great saying that i use in the book it's not mine it says this it says are you living a life based on a set of memories or are you living a life based on the vision of your future yeah i'll say that again are you living a life that is based on a set of memories or are you living a life based on the vision of your future and, 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 I, and I hate, because I can answer it, a lot of people are living based on... Most online. people are. So most people are in repetition mode. Yeah. And so what they do is they live out their lives based on, you know, you could get a girl that her boyfriend in matric cheated on her and all men are rubbish. And that becomes the, the story. Exactly. The, the mindset. And a man will say, you know, I got uh, embarrassed in school and the bully embarrassed me. Now I'm going to stand out of line. I'm going to carry on and just be a good soldier moving forward. You know. Mm. So what we do is because we haven't healed our memories, because we haven't healed our relationship with our father and mother, because we're still blaming the and government, the, issue, yeah. the black people, the white people, the green people, the, yeah. you can blame anything you yeah. want. Yeah. When you're not taking that responsibility, you stay in fright or flight and anxiousness. And then what happens is you want to now move into a world that requires you to be creative, to be innovative to be excited, to be energized. How can you? You when can't. You, when you haven't even dealt with You haven't dealt with that. So the book is a combination of taking responsibility as well as understanding what the future looks like and what it means for us to show up in the future. Uh, I think just doing some research on you, um, I, I read about you, which really I could relate to. Um, I used to sell cars. Um, I had to quit selling cars, started doing radio, um, couldn't keep my car, went back taking taxis. Obviously, it's not the same scale, but you went from being a millionaire between 23 and 28 uh, because of the deal that you did with the mm. shoes mm. to losing it all. Mm. How do you recover? Like, what was your biggest fear when you had lost all the money? Simon Cowell, the guy who does Idols, yeah. and uh, in, in his biography, he says, you know, the best day of his life was the day he woke up after he declared bankruptcy. And he thought, whoa, was that it? This thing that I feared for so long, I'm still here. I can I still operate. I reached all of these yes, things. Yes, yes, yes. Like how shameful would it be? How embarrassing would it be? And then you wake up the next day and you're like, okay, that happened. Let me move on. But, but I got stuck. I got stuck in a deep depression yeah. uh, for, for about three to five years. I couldn't pay a 6,000 Rand rent a month, you know? And this is my, you know, I came from a, a 4 Did million Rand Bryanston home with an M3 convertible and business class flights overseas to not being able to pay 6,000 Rand rent. And now being in the same circle of people where people used to see me like this and now I'm like this. Because I think that's the scariest thing when you've lost it. Is it now you've got to hang around with people that used to see you yeah. as and, someone that's above them. Yeah, and then people say, you know, you know who your true friends are. But the truth is behind that statement, I think it's a wrong statement. And I'll tell you why. When you are making a lot of money and when you are so confident and moving forward, the people around you are also confident and moving forward. When you get depressed and you don't have that money around you, obviously people don't want to hang around you. Anyway. You're anyway. Yeah. anyway yeah. So for me, it was a process of becoming very clear on the fact that I was depressed, firstly. And I think that's the intelligence of depression is that you don't even know you're depressed. When yeah, you are yeah, blaming, yeah, yeah, yeah. shaming and not taking responsibility, it becomes the norm. Because what you do then is invite your friends that you always blame, maim and shame everybody around you. You all get together and watch the football or you bride together and then you just moan about the government. You're not dealing, the part with, the of, issue, you're not dealing you, with the issues. You're not dealing with the issues. Exactly. So one, become aware. Two, seek counsel. This is not the first time this has happened. Many people have gone through this. In fact, every human being has gone through this. And so read books, watch TED Talks, go to coaches, do the work that's required to get to a point where you realize that your reality is a creation of your focused energy. If your focused energy is in a depressed state, of course you can't create money. Of course you can't create a new career. Of course you can't start a new business. You've yeah. got to be in the right state firstly. So it took me about five years to get out of it. And now that I'm out of it, I'm able to teach it because there's a great saying by Yogi Bhajan. He says, if you want to learn something, read about it. If you want to understand something, write about it. If you want to master something, teach it. And I want to master the subject, which is how do you become a spectacular human being? 
And how do you have an impact on a billion people around you in a positive manner yeah. so that you can become the new type of billionaire? For me, the new type of billionaire is not a dollar-based billionaire. It's an impact-based billionaire. And what plus, world, yeah. exactly. And then you'll still make money. Trust me, you'll make a lot of money. But do it with elegance. Do yeah. it with deliberate intention rather than just looking for the gap, just looking for the cash flow. Because the trust me, deal. the biggest deal, let me yeah. tell you what the biggest deal is going to do to you. It's going to get you depressed. Because once you get it, guess what you're going to want? Just one more deal. Another, another. And just the one more deal. Always chasing that high. And you're just chasing. Backing the chase. Backing the chase. And then you, you also speak about victim mindset. Yes. And the... Explain the key. So there's many different types of victims. I have, I suffered from three different types of victim. Yeah. Um, in my first book, What's Your Moonshot? I call it peeing in your nappy. And you've got to read the book to understand the analogy. But the first type of victim is the one that we all think is the classic victim, the martyr victim, the person who feels sorry for themselves, that didn't get invited to that party, that didn't get the promotion, they ate far too much chocolate cake, they feel fat now. You know, we've all had this victim yeah. mindset. It still comes to visit us from time to time yeah. the second one is called the arrogant inferior victim best described by let's say you see a guy driving past in a Ferrari somewhere and in your head quietly you go thief and you carry on walking what that is, is that anybody who's most successful than you, you pull them down to become below you. You arrogantly make them inferior to you. And in that arrogant, inferior state, you never get to drive a Ferrari because what you've just said is that I need to be a thief to drive a Ferrari. Okay? So that's the second type of victim. Another example I can give you is um, a, a, an acquaintance of mine was flying to Italy mm. and he was flying economy class and he took a picture of his feet up on the seat next to him in economy class. His caption said, those fools flying business class tickets, look at me sitting in economy class. He just called everybody in business class a fool, which means he'll never fly business class because yeah. he has to become a fool to be fly business class. And he'll, he's not a fool. <laughs> and he's not a fool, but now he's a fool. Yeah, okay. The third type of victim... My favorite type of victim is the arrogant superior victim. The arrogant superior victim is somebody who's superior to everybody else's stupidity. This person is the one who always complains about the government, about men, about women, about black people, about Indian people, about white people, about green people. Yeah. They are always superior to all the problems below them. And so what they do is they invite their other friends that are superiorly arrogant about their positioning. And then they bride together and moan and bitch about everything that is wrong with the country, with the company they're working for. And when they leave, you know what's changed? Their blood pressure. Nothing else has changed. Those are the people that really never think they're victims because they're angry. They're justified in their anger. Yeah. But truth be told, the only way you can move something is through becoming elegant, deliberate, and intentional about it, not being angry. John, I'm driving home right now and I'm like, I actually want to go and, and here I want to get the book. Where do people get the book? Where do people meet you? Where are you in Durban tonight? Awesome. So I'm in Durban uh, tonight at Mount Edgecombe. Uh, we, I'm doing a 90-minute keynote and Q&A. We have about 300 people registered already. It's a free event. Uh, you just need to get onto Facebook and look up Magnetize with two I's, Z and E okay. on Facebook, um, on Durban um, Invite. And that invite will lead you to a Quicket link. And if you can just register there and you come through, it's a free event. Uh, I'll be selling books afterwards and doing book signings and pictures. And the keynote is very much based on my book around the research that I've done over the last year of what are the trends that are coming in the future? What are the tool sets that we can utilize to get out of a a victim mindset and in yeah. order to become victors successful and thrive in the future that we're coming to plus you can catch me online uh, johnsane.com i'm on linkedin i'm on instagram i'm on facebook i make videos and vlogs from all around the world i'm always sharing um, at least twice a week i'm sharing videos around what's a, what i'm experiencing and uh, why i think we need to be taking responsibility as human beings and becoming the best versions of ourselves to become spectacular become rich become successful become positive yeah. you need to be able to take responsibility for these things john i wish i had more time uh because i think i needed this more than any else uh thanks for coming through man uh pleasure having you uh thank you thank and, you so much and, for having me good luck with you with, with tonight thank you so much thank, thank you. you cheers that was actually great actually. <laughs> you know, that was